Okay, so here what I'd like to show you is a gill biopsy and skin scrape from a normal healthy goldfish. I guess often we're showing pathological conditions uh, without showing you what normal looks like and so it's hard to tell when there's some change that's occurring. So in this gill biopsy, um, I've actually taken a few more than I normally would just so that you can actually see the differences or what normal would look like um, in various different gill filaments. So what we can see here uh, the gill filaments might go down to a lower power and you notice it looks a bit like a Christmas tree in appearance so I've got a little pointy bit of an arrow at the bottom of the screen so we'll use that to point to you what's happening so running through the center is the cartilage uh, of the primary filament and that holds it all up and going across to the left and to the right are called secondary lamellae and these are sort of flat leaf like structures uh, sort of like the uh, leaves of a book and it operates like an inside out lung in a counter current fashion so the blood would go one way and the water would be pumped the other way but enough about structure and function um, what you can also notice from this wet prep is that the amount of mucus which is from here to about here is sort of quite moderate and it's quite low on this side so this is what a normal healthy gill should look like it shouldn't have too much mucus at all and also when you are assessing gill health look at the redness make sure that they are all filled with blood uh, anemic goldfish would look quite pale um, and also have a look to see if there's anything moving um, so if there's anything moving it's evidence of an external parasite and it can be a number any one of a number of things so over here we're sort of scanning around and we're seeing basically nothing moving just bits of gills not too much mucus uh, no evidence of rupture of blood vessels um, apart from some which may be artifactual from uh, collecting the specimen so what I'll put on next sorry, is a slide and we'll see maybe you're able to uh, tell what's wrong with him so we'll move around and look for the bit of the gill so here we have some gills and what do you notice here that's different is that there's a lot more mucus around and the blood vessels look a lot more congested um, you can see a lot more red in the section or uh, in this specimen and there's so much more mucus around so what's causing this to happen we'll have to go a bit closer and scan a little bit more So when you see this sort of reaction, you start thinking, could it be something to do with the water quality? Could it be an external parasite? So that's where water quality uh, testing is really important and also the history about whether there are any toxins that have happened, if it's a new tank or whether they've washed the filter too well. And if you come here, it's not really moving too much, but let's see what we can find here. This guy's not quite moving, maybe asleep. Oh yeah, you can only just see him moving a little bit. But that is a gill fluke. You can see that it's got two, it's got some haptos on the left hand side. I'll put it right to the corner of the screen so you can see it. And you see there's some motion in the middle there. So there, in the middle of the gills, is a fluke. It's a bit difficult to tell what sort of fluke that is in the gills um, because you can't quite see whether it's got eye spots, uh, maybe it doesn't. 
which puts it into the skin flute category. However, it's got fairly large haptors, so I'm suspecting that um, it may, after all, be a skin fluke within the gills of the fish. So, yeah, so skin fluke and gill flukes might be a bit of a misnomer because you can find either one in either place. So there you have it. Uh, wet preparation examination of gill biopsies. Normal and abnormal.